Hello, it's Sean. Today I'm going to be playing another game of Imperial Skies. Um, today I've pulled out a Victory at Sea uh, rulebook by um, Mongoose Publishing. It's a World War II miniature game, uh, but it's got some scenarios in there and I thought that they would work well for this game. So today I'm going to be playing the blockade scenario. Uh, had to tweak the rules a little bit to make it work for Imperial Skies. So uh, the basic fleets, the blockader is going to have 100% uh, of the points. The defender or the blockade runner is going to get 50% of the points uh, that the uh, blockader has. Uh, and my fleets... This is the Austro-Hungarian fleet. Uh, they have about 100, and, or excuse me, about 370 points, I believe. They have a Prince Eugen light cruiser, two Hazar destroyers, and three Danab frigates. And my French fleet has um, a little bit smaller force. They have six Perigo patrol boats. So my idea here is that these guys are just going to break out, go fast, and uh, just try to get through the line as quick as they can. Don't have a lot of guns on these, and they're all short range, so I don't imagine they're actually going to be doing a whole lot of firing. Uh, but anyway, uh... I've got a four foot by six foot table here today. The, the blockade force is going to deploy first. And what they're going to do is they're going to deploy on that end of the table, 24 inches in, so halfway up. And they're going to deploy on the very edge. And then I'm going to roll 2d6 and multiply that, or excuse me, I'm going to roll. 1d6 and multiply that by 12 inches and they're going to move down the, the board that many inches so their force is going to be kind of spread out once they're all set they all have to be facing the same direction um, and that is going to be their deployment the French uh, fleet is actually just going to move on in the very first turn I am not going to be using any carriers or aircraft, so that's not going to affect my game. Um, so, a scenario rule is the blockade for uh, the blockade runner has one free turn at the beginning of the battle. They can move, attack, uh, use their ships normally, um, but the blockading fleet may do nothing. So they don't get to take special actions or move or fire anything. Basically, it's just a free turn. These guys have su surprised them as they're coming out, uh, and uh, it's going to help them to get off the board. The game continues until the blockade runner has either all been destroyed or has all left the table. So, victory conditions is the blockade, uh, the blockader uh, gets victory points worth of the value of any ship they destroy. So each of the Perigro is uh, uh, 35 points. Uh, they all get points for any they destroy. And then the Blockade Runner, which is the French fleet here, they earn victory points for the value of any ship they get off of the board. So again, if they get any of those uh, ships off, they'll earn 35 points each. Um, I don't know how balanced this game is going to be. It's my first time uh, putting this together with this scenario, but it thought it, thought it sounded interesting and could be fun. I kind of thought about taking maybe like two bigger ships to try to break the blockade, uh, but ultimately I decided to try the, the small ships and just see how that worked. Um, so we'll put the uh, deploy the, the fleet and we'll see how this works out. So first, I'm going to roll for this ship. 
So it's going to go four feet down the table. And uh, another rule here with this is you actually get six inches to deploy wherever that is. Uh, I'm going to do that after they've all been set so I can kind of group them together if I can. The next ship down the line he is going to be one foot right here. All the way down. And that ship. Alright, that is the Austro-Hungarians deployed. And these guys are not on the table to start with. So I feel like maybe I've got a better chance to run down here because they're a little bit further away here. So I think my French fleet are going to attempt to go cut the line this way. So the first turn I'm going to roll for command points for the fleet. Um, awesome, I got five command points for the French fleet here. I need to mark these so we can see who's who. These are all the same ship. So these little colored tokens will help me know on the, the record sheet, which ship is which. And I'll need to do that over here for these guys as well. And I think we're ready to go. So I'm essentially going to break these into two groups. We're going to go three dice to one group, or one ship here. And two dice over here. And I'm going to say this: the ship with the white token is actually my flagship for this group. And of course the uh, Prince Eugen will be the flagship for that side.
So my first activation is going to be to move. I'm going to forego firing so that I can make a move at one and a half speed. Uh, and then I'm going to use a token or command point for group activation. And then I'm going to use another uh, for the additional speed, which is called... Boom, 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 stoking the fires. Add plus three move to an airship. So these guys' base speed is 10. So they're going to get 15 for the one and a half speed for foregoing firing. And then they are also going to have three more. So their speed in this first round is going to be 18. Which hopefully will give them a good chance of getting off. It might also make this game really boring. So, from the edge of the table, these guys are going to go 18. And that is the end of their activation. Normally, we would then activate a, a ship over there, but because of the special scenario rule, they don't get to activate on the first turn, we will activate the second group here, and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to spend an activation or a command action for um, a group, and then a command action for the stoke the fires, and they're also going to be able to move 18. And that is the end of the turn. This will go away. And now we're going to roll for initial. Or first, we're going to roll for command actions. So this die will be for the Austro-Hungarians. They get five, and this die will be for the the French. They also get five. Um. Alright, so now we're going to roll for initiative. Actually, they're going to use one of theirs to boost their initiative. The French are not. So the Austro-Hungarians have a plus one to their initiative. And I'll roll them first. Here's the French. And the Austro-Hungarians win initiative, so they get to activate first. They're going to activate these... Uh, First, because they need to do some damage to these guys before they get out of here. So, the Huzzah over here is going to use one of these for group activation, and the other one, well, he's just doing the group activation for now. The Huzzah move is 8. The Dana move is also 8. Um, I think... Let's see.
Alright, so this guy's going to activate first. He's going to turn a little bit so that he is not... Forward three, and then he's going to turn two. Get some broadside going on there. This guy is going to do similar. He's going to move forward three. Turn three. All right, and we're both within ten, so we can use all of our guns. Alright, so the Dunab, the smaller ship here, has four medium guns and four small guns. The uh, Hazar has seven medium guns and four large guns. They're going to fire at separate ships, so the Dunab is going to fire on this, the Hazar is going to fire on this ship. And I will roll. We're within ten, so the yellows need sixes, the orange need uh, fives. Here's the uh, Denob. And it looks like I have a single hit. And that is on the red. And then uh, the Hazar is firing on the blue. Perigo. Perigo. All right, I got a couple sixes here. So that's nice. That's nice. All right, looks like I've got a total of four hits so far, and two sixes. So a yellow, that is a miss, and the orange needs a five, and that's another hit. So five hits on that ship is actually going to sink it. They only have three each. Oh no! <laughs> And that was the ship that had the command action points, so that group just lost those. Huh. Maybe this isn't going to be quite as easy as I thought it would be for the French. Alright, so that is uh, it for their activation. Actually, it's not. This ship moved five total. He's going to go ahead and continue making his move because he knows he needs to turn. Because they're going to fly right by him. So, he moved five. So that is eight. And this guy, he moved six. So he has two more inches of movement. And go there. Alright, I'm going to activate this group here, they're going to do a group activation, they're going to forego firing so that they can move at one and a half speed, and then they're going to use their second activation to start the fire so they get to move 15. And they're just all going to go straight forward. And that is their turn. 
Uh, next up, I think we're going to have the Prince Eugen go. Um, he has movement of six. He does want to fire, though, so he's not going to stoke his fires. And I guess he doesn't have any command action points anyway. Let's see if he has range. So 30 inches, he's going to be out. So he's going to forego firing to add half of his speed. So he can move 9. And he has a C class for turn, so that's what he's going to be using. That is 4 inches. And he will... Go another five inches straight forward. And he would be in range now, but because he used his he used the uh, rule that lets him forego firing to add a half his speed, he's not going to be able to fire. So back to the French here. Uh, we're going to move the orange. Kerjo, he is going to forego his movement, so he will have 15, or forego his fire, so he'll have 15 inches, oh these guys should move 18 inches, uh, because they did the command action and forego the fire, so I'm going to bump them forward, they might need that. Three more inches. All right, back to the Hungarians. I'm going to move this Hazar. He has eight inches of movement. Again, he is going to forego firing so that he can move half again quicker, so he's going to have 12 inches of movement, so that is 3, four. And now he has 8 more inches to move, That is his turn. This ship is going to move forward 15 inches and not fire. And that is all for the French. The last two Austro-Hungarians will go. This guy's kind of off camera right here. He has 8 inches of movement, so he just went 2 with the tight turn. He's again going to forego his firing so that he can move quicker, and he will end up right here. Same with this guy, he is going to forego his firing. And he has 10 inches. I think initiative in this next turn is going to be a big a big decider in this battle. So that is everybody activated. And that's it. So we're going to roll for command action points. Here's for the French fleet. Uh-oh, they only get two. <laughs> and the Austro-Hungarians, uh -huh, they get seven. So, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to do one here, and we're going to do one here. And then, 
for the Austro-Hungarians. We're going to go two here. One there. And they really want to win initiative because if they don't, they're not going to be able to pop these guys. So they're going to use four to boost their initiative. So here's the Austro-Hungarian with a plus four to their die roll. And that's a six. Here's the French with a uh, plus zero to their die roll. Uh, almost. Almost tied it. Um, so... The Austrians win with a, a six on their initiative, so they're going to go first. And they're going to activate these guys first. And they're going to do a group activation. And let's see. The knob is going to go first. He has eight inches of movement. Six more. And he's going to fire all of his shots on this ship right here. So he has he has ten, I think he is. He has so he has four small guns and four medium guns. He needs sixes on the small and fives on the medium. Two hits with small guns. So they get to re-roll. Need sixes again. That's it, he has two hits on the red, and it took a point of damage previously, so that is going to put him down. And again, loses that command action point, which doesn't really matter because he sunk. And then the, the other ship here gets to finish his, or take his movement. That's three. That's five. That's three more. And he is going to fire. <laughs> on the closest ship, this yellow ship, and he has four small and seven medium guns. Again, five on the orange, six on the yellow. No hits on the small, three hits on the medium guns, and two of those are sixes, so he gets to reroll. And four hits, which is going to sink that ship. So they've at least tied at this point. Um, the French is trying to activate. I think they're going to activate this ship first because they're going to hope that these guys are out of range of them. So we're going to activate this ship first. He is going to forego firing and have a 15 inch move, which will take him off the table. So that is one ship worth of victory points for the French. It is now the Austro Hungarians' turn to activate again. Um. 
We're going to group activate these guys because I think collectively they've got more. I don't think they're going to have range though. No, they're not. So I'm not going to do that. Prince Yugen is going to activate. His speed is 6. He's going to be out of range. Let's see. He's going to turn just a little. It's four more inches of movement. All right. He has four large guns which have a 30 inch range. And he's out. Oh no. So, front are going to activate. They'll activate with a group activation. Move both of these off the table. And they will have earned victory points for breaking the blockade. So it looks like we got 105 points for the... Uh, Austro-Hungarians and ships destroyed, 105 points for the uh, French for ships uh, exiting the table. A pretty easy, quick scenario. Uh, if I had chosen larger ships, it would have been a little bit different story for the French because they wouldn't move so quickly. Uh, they would have had to, to fight a little bit more. I think I will have to replay this scenario that way with uh, a different selection of ships for the French player. Uh, I like how the randomness of the deployment of the blockading force uh, works out. Kind of keeps them from like putting in the middle a nice even line. You don't get a lot of choice in where your ships are, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting. Nice quick scenario. Uh, I only played a, a small force here, less than 400 points for the uh, blockading force, and. Um, I think the, the French force, the blockade runners, had about 180 points. Uh, so it's a small game, quick game. I could raise the point value of the game, and that would uh, also make it a longer game and give a little bit more variation. But I thought a nice quick game would be a, a fun thing to do. Uh, so if you've got, you know, half hour, 45 minutes to play, this is uh, easy enough to put together and uh, set out some ships and give it a try. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments or saw any rules that I got wrong, please post those in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.